Shabbat Shalom, my friend. This is Rabbi Teichtel from Chabad of Nashville sharing with you my thought for the week. In this week's Torah portion, we're going to read about a very special Torah scroll that never left the side of the king of the Jewish people. The holiest object that we have as a Jewish people is the Sefer Torah, the Torah scroll. There are over 600,000 letters in the Torah. And for a Torah to be kosher, every letter must be written very carefully. For each letter is a critical part of the whole Torah. And if even one letter is missing, the entire Torah scroll is invalid. At the same time, the laws of the Torah scroll state that each letter must stand on its own, surrounded by empty space. Even if a letter is slightly connected to another, even with a thin mark of ink, this too invalidates the Torah scroll and wouldn't be kosher. Friends, our sages teach us that there are 600,000 categories of souls. Each of us possess a soul that corresponds to one of the Torah letters. For our souls to develop and to succeed, they must reflect the two laws of the Torah scroll. On the one hand, we all need to understand our responsibility to the greater community. For we are a part of the whole and cannot exclude ourselves from our collective responsibility. When we act irresponsibly, we affect everyone. We're not, we're not acting in a vacuum because whatever we do must be for the good, for both for ourselves and for others in our community. But also at the same time, we are individuals. Each one of us has a unique contribution and a special way of making a difference. And the world is a better place because we don't all do the same exact thing. Every individual can shine brightly with their own personality. Our individuality needs to be appreciated, needs to be protected. Each one of us have different personalities, different talents, and different strengths that must be nurtured in our own special way. You see, friends, we are all responsible to each other, but at the same time, we are each special in our own way. You know, this week, if you read the news, there was a story in New York about a day camp just two days ago, on Wednesday, children that went on a trip in Canarsie in Brooklyn, New York. Unfortunately, as the children got back on the bus at the end of the trip, one child went missing, a little boy, six years old, Yosef. Everybody went looking for him and nobody can find him. They were in a park and this child wandered off. A message went out on the internet on a WhatsApp, a child is missing, a six-year-old boy is missing. And everybody, went looking for this child. Hundreds of volunteers. This was four o'clock in the afternoon when camp was over. It gets dark at eight o'clock. Hundreds of volunteers started searching this park all over Brooklyn. The word went out. There was one man by the name of Sidney who read about this online. He was about 60 years old. He wasn't in the best of health. He said, you know what? Why don't I, I also join the search. But he said, you know what? I'm too old. I'm not in the best of health. Why don't I leave it for the younger people? What difference can I make? Yet then, he said, I'm going to go out. A boy is missing. A child is missing. I want to at least do my part. I need to feel for my collective community. He might be one, but we're all one together. So he went out and he came to this station where all the people, were hundreds of volunteers in the park, and he comes out and he sees everyone is standing. They're waiting for word, to get word from the commander what to do, where to search. He said, I'm not going to wait. And this is near the uh, Hudson River, Belt Parkway Highway is running there. And he goes and he starts searching near the water. And he's thinking to himself, what am I doing? What difference am I going to make? But he goes. He says, I got to do something. And he goes and he starts walking. And he says, Yosef, Yosef. He's calling the little boy's name. He says, I have pizza for you. I have ice cream for you. And he's walking in the woods under a bridge near the Hudson River, right off the Belt Parkway. And he hears, ta, ta, which is daddy, daddy. And he stops in his trace and he says, What? Did I hear the voice of a little child? And he turns to someone near him. He says, did you hear that? He said, no, I didn't. He says, I'm telling you, I heard a voice of a little child. And he goes around and he says, Yosef, Yosef, where are you? And the sun was setting. It was really getting late already. So he calls, he had the number to the commander of the police of that area in Brooklyn. And he calls him. 
He calls him once, twice, three times, four times. He's not answering the phone. Finally, the 10th time he answers, he says, listen to me. I'm telling you, I was just searching here and I heard a voice of a little boy. Why don't you send some people out here? And it was getting dark. It was pouring rain in Brooklyn this past Wednesday night. And he said, fine. They send out a couple of ATVs. They send out a truck and everyone starts searching, but they can't find it. Can't find the boy. And it's starting to get dark. And this man, Sidney was thinking to himself, maybe I made a mistake. Why did I even call all these resources to come help? Maybe I was just imagined. And he was a little let down, but he said, you know what? This is all from God. He felt bad that he missed the afternoon service and the, the shul. But he said, listen, I gave the best of myself to go help to find a child. And he started walking home. A few minutes as he's walking away, a few minutes later, he hears dancing and he's singing. And there's singing going on and everyone is excited. He turns back. And he goes back to where, that, where he was a few minutes ago. And he sees they're dancing with this little boy. They found little Yosef. He felt, wow. Baruch Hashem, thank God they found this boy. It was dark, it was cold, it was wet. The police were about to give up. And he went home feeling better. And a few minutes later, he got a, police, a call from the police commander, the captain. He says, I want you to tell, tell you something, my friend. It was you that made the break in the case. You didn't give up. You went, you searched. You knew that there was much more than just you. You had to give it your best. And you were the one that helped us find this little boy. And he was thinking to himself, how just a few hours ago, he wasn't even gonna go out. He was thinking, oh, it's not so easy for him. His health, he has to go to Shul and Davin. Yet, he went and he brought about this big miracle to happen and this boy's reunited with his family. Friends, I read the story, I was so moved. I actually heard the story from this man himself on a recording that's going viral. Friends, they are in life. We just need to get up and go and do. We are individuals. We have our unique talents and contributions to society. But we are not a people without being there for each other. We have our uniqueness that God gave each one their talents, their skills to make this world a better place. But we need to be there for each other, even when it's not easy. We need to go out and we need to call upon our friends, our neighbors, and call out to them. Awaken them. Nobody should be left alone. The world is going through a challenging time now. Things were getting better with COVID. Now we, things are going the other way. There's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of anxiety. But now as we celebrate the Jewish New Year in a few weeks, we need to think about our neighbors, our friends, or people that we don't even interact with. We need to go out and search for them, awaken their souls and bring them back to their Father in heaven. You do your part, God will do his part. And the merit of this, may you and I and our entire community be blessed with Hekativa Vachatima Tova. You should be written and inscribed and sealed for a sweet new year. Shabbat Shalom.